I'm Emma, he's Stu, and these three monkeys are our intrepid explorers. We have given up the 9 to 5 rat race for a life of fun, adventure and learning as we explore the world. We are currently in Central Europe and making our way across South Germany. We are about to head east and travel towards Hungary, and specifically Budapest, which is one of our favourite cities in Europe. Before we even get to Hungary, we have to travel across Austria. So before we head off on our mammoth drive, we need to figure out the oh-so-complicated Austrian toll system. It's a real head-scratcher. We are then planning on parking Betty in the centre of the city, right next to the Baroschneget City Park. This way we can get into the city super easily and explore this fantastic capital city and its rich history and culture. For those of you who have never been to Budapest, you are in for a real treat. And for those of you that have, then stick around, you might see some sights you didn't know about. If you like what you see and enjoy our videos, then please do drop us a like. It's a massive help to our channel. Hopefully, you will subscribe and join us on all of our travel adventures. Okay, before getting to Hungary, we had to figure out how we were going to get there from Germany. We did have a few choices, but each came with pros and cons. Okay, so after figuring out what we actually need to do, um, we've, we're all right on the border now to Austria. Yeah. Um, so we need to get a go box. Now, we don't know if this is going to cover us for the emissions, but from... <laughs> it's very hard to tell what covers what, to be honest. But anyway, we're just going to go in and get a go box. Maybe ask them at the desk, see what they say. Um, but we are going to use the tolls because the thought of driving through Czech Republic and then come down into Slovakia and then into um, Hungary that way or Poland, Slovakia, Hungary, we're just going to pay for the tolls and just be done with it. So we, we don't know how much it's going to cost, but I think it's like 40, 30, 40 cents a kilometre, isn't it? Something like that for the size of our truck. And we're actually only cutting across the top of Austria from Salzburg to Vienna. So it shouldn't be too bad. And we should hopefully have enough left that we can do it on the way back as well when we come back out of Hungary. So anyway, fingers crossed. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Company, company, and it's going to be the most boring time of our life. Yeah. Okay, so if you need to pick up a go box, which you only need to do if you're over three and a half tons, other than that, you can just have a vignette, which you can get online. But if you need a go box, you need to go to one of these garages or one of these specific places where they actually uh, sell these go boxes, and you need to pick one up there. Now there is a starter cost fee, which is about ten euros, I think, and then after that you just pay for the kilometers and if you have any left over on your box you can hand that back in on the way out and you should in theory get a refund the go box okay, right so we're here now going to install the box so em's going to show you how to install it so if you're in this situation i mean she come on em you're confident about this aren't you we'll see so em's going to follow the instructions and she's going to install the box and hopefully it works otherwise we're going to end up with a massive fine so <laughs> here we go so I have to press the button and check that we're set, and we are. So number three flash because we've got three tags, Ooh. or three axles, sorry. So then on the back, shows you where to put it. So I have to peel off the sticker and then get it in the right place, which is sort of in the middle, 10 centimetres up and 30 centimetres down. So I'll go for about there. Try not to press the button. There we go. Is it on? I hope so. Okay, ready to go? Ready to go. Ready to go? made it through Austria. We're now in Hungary. Yeah, so we've made it to Hungary and the emissions thing was fine. I mean... Well, we think it is. Yeah, we don't know. We haven't we stopped know. so far, so... Maybe because yeah. it's a Sunday and no one's about, I don't know. But what, what we looked at, what we read was, that you said that it was the go box. Yeah, so on places. everything we read, basically the vignettes, once you went over three and a half tonnes, you had to have a go box which replaced the sticker. That's what I've read on loads of different things, so that's what we went with. So I read that there was there were two distinct things, but 
you didn't need to pay attention to the stickers. So who knows, who knows, but we made it through, we didn't get the 2,000 euro fine, which is the, the wax, ma wax the, the maximum, wax the maximum fine. So we're fine and we are cruising now on the roads. We've just gone past Goya and we're on our way to Budapest. A few moments later. So a little update. We seem to have maybe fallen a bit foul of the toll system in Hungary. Um, did our research, got a vignette online. I followed the process that I thought was right. Um, well, and mean it you said can, on there- You can't speak Hungarian. <laughs> It said on there about camper vans, so we went with that one. Pay for it all and everything, so we were ready to cross the border. All A-OK, -okay, we thought. Now it turns out, we think, we're meant to have another little box because we're over three and a half tonnes. But I wasn't very clear when I was looking at it and researching it. Well, when we sat in traffic, and there's, they have the same system, I think, in Hungary as they have in Austria. And then like, in Austria, there's the little gantries all the way, like every 10 kilometers or something like that, 10 or 20 kilometers. And they click you and you get a beep on your go thing. And we were sat there in the traffic and we're looking up and we saw these gantries, exactly the same in Austria. And it was like, yeah. are we sure we've got the right toll? Because surely we'd be like beeping, like if, if you know, like the same sort of system. So then we have a quick look, check it out. No, there is a, H-U-Go or Hugo, which, you know, sounds Hungry better. Hungry go, I get. Hugo, sounds better. Anyway, so the likelihood is we're gonna have ourselves a couple of lovely little finds when we get back uh, to the UK. Hopefully we won't. You know, maybe they'll look on us and go, well, they did buy a vignette, they had a go. They had a Hugo, they had a Hugo. Hugo. I'm saying, I'm saying it's catching on. Uh, but they may not bother, but I, let's be honest, they're gonna bother. So we're now got a slight diversion an extra hour getting into Budapest, but do you know what? We're enjoying the countryside and taking it all in. So we were now going to have to get to Budapest on the non-toll roads. We had been blessed with great roads in Germany, so we were a little apprehensive about the quality of the roads in Hungary. There you go, that's the Danube. Big Look river. Big it is. Massive. And up ahead is Budapest. We arrived in the park up a lot later than we had planned due to our alternative route. But better late than never. Unfortunately, there was space for us to park up. The park up itself is a great stop off if you have a larger motorhome. It costs around 25 euros and this was including electricity. It was a bit of a nightmare to get in as you had to download an app called Parkle. Hungry does love an app for everything. We actually had a nightmare using the app and had to call the number on the gate and settle up using a back payment to the owner. It had all the usual motorhome home requirements, but it was very basic. To be fair though, it was a five minute walk from the park, so we weren't complaining. Just watch the slope getting in as we caught our exhaust on the way down on the drop. Today, we were checking out Pest, which is historically where the majority of the Hungarian people lived during the merging of the three cities and was more densely urbanized than Buddha. Today, it is where the best places to eat, drink and be merry are located. Good, Good morning. morning. So we are in the Baro Schliget Park, uh, the big city park in the middle of Budapest, and it's absolutely incredible. It's stunning. There's so much to do here. Loads of playgrounds for the kids, a cycling area, and loads of entertainment for adults as well. So you were here yesterday, weren't you? But we've been here a few days, and you guys have spent a bit of time in here already, haven't you? We spent a good few hours at one of the play parks, doing some schoolwork, looking at everything that was around here. The kids had a fabulous time. Seems to be there's been loads of money invested in the park because we've actually been, well, we've been to Budapest before, um, as we've already told you. And yeah, since then, there's just been loads and loads of things have been built, um, which is great for the kids. But we're going into the city now. We're going to do Pest today. So we're going to go and check out some of the different sites in Pest. Um, but we've got one stop to make first, which is the thermal baths. We weren't going to visit the Sacerni bath today, which is really unfortunate 
These baths are amazing and are one of the largest spas in Europe. We have been before and it's definitely a relaxing adult activity and without kids cannonballing and jumping all over the place. Voy de Hunyard Castle is located in the city park and it's a copy of the Hunyard Castle, known as the Corvin Castle, in Hunadara, Romania. It was built in 1896 by Inyak Alpa and is inspired by the seven distinct buildings from across Hungary and amalgamates different architectural styles. Today, it is home to the Museum of Hungarian Agriculture. This is Hero Square, and it's one of the major squares in Budapest. It features a statue to the seven chieftains of Hungary. One of the Hungarian delicacies you need to try if you are coming here is langosh. This is a deep fried flatbread usually covered in sour cream, cheese and garlic. I mean they are incredible. This is serious grub right here. So the best place to come for your langosh in Budapest is definitely langosh papi. That's not just us saying that, we've been told that by Hungarian people as well and they are incredible. So we've got a fully loaded langosh. It comes with bacon, it comes with sausage, it's got onions, and it's also got the cheese, and also the sour cream as well. And the kids have gone for a slightly different one. I have been planning this. What have you got? Nutella. I have been planning this ever since I came to Hungary. They are going to be covered in chocolate spread very shortly. Mm -hmm. One to ten. Ten. Home bread. Right, so we are on our way to Parliament now, aren't we? Yeah which is an absolutely stunning building in Budapest. It's definitely worth checking out. So it's baking though, isn't it today? Yeah. It's about 26 degrees. It's hot work, isn't it? The Ortsakaz is the seat of the National Assembly of Hungary, also known as the Parliament of Hungary. It is an absolutely stunning building and is one of the more populous tourist spots in the city. It was opened in 1902. It used to have a red star perched atop of the dome during the Soviet occupation of Hungary, which was removed during the fall of communism in Hungary. Always good to find a free toilet. This one's right outside Parliament in the tourist information place. What do we think to the Parliament building then, everyone? Excellent. Awesome. Fantastico. Fantastico, wow. What was your favourite bit? The bleeder top. Imri Naj was the leader of the Hungarian Revolution of 1956. He was secretly tried for treason, executed by the Soviets and buried in an unmarked grave. He was later given a state funeral in 1989 and was reburied in the new public cemetery in Budapest. He remains today a hugely influential and important figure in Hungarian history. So that's it, we've uh, nearly finished our tour around Pest. Uh, done a bit of pavement pounding today. I mean, We'll have easily done about 20 kilometers. Just gonna hit up this cookie shop now and uh, check out the basilica and that's us done. play parks in Hungary. They have become great at making friends whilst playing even when they speak different languages. We met Nicholas and his mum at one park and the kids played for hours together and we met up about three more times after that too. As it turned out they have their own cookie and brunch places called Cookie Beacon and we were invited along to try the cookies. They were the best cookies we have ever had. Absolutely amazing. We visited the Budapest shop, but they are starting to open more stores throughout Eastern Europe. So, if you are travelling around and fancy an amazing brunch or a cookie, 
check them out. We've had a very action-packed day today. Been around loads of sites, seen loads of things. And we're just heading back now in the sunset to uh, head back to Betty. Um, got on we're the wrong... using the metro this time. Got off the wrong stop. We did. Barely. Well, that's okay. That's fine. But then we've got a little bit of a walk and then we get to go on to the next one. If any of you are sort of wondering price-wise, uh, you can buy 10 tickets off the Budapest Go app and it works out about a pound a ticket and that's one journey per person so it's super cheap I mean you know to get into the city five pounds for us yeah it's five pounds and to get out it's five pounds five so pounds, that's really really cheap so yeah super easy to get around um, and easy to understand as well that is the coolest camper van ever we made it back what a busy day in Pest had a good time Let's get unlocked, let's get inside. Today we are visiting Buda and we are exploring this part of the city. We are heading up to the castle and hopefully we're going to see the hospital in the rock too. Let's go. So yesterday we checked out the pest side of the city and today we're going to check out Buda. Historically, Buda was regarded as the more affluent and residential part of the city for the city's bourgeoisie. After the reconquest of the city from the Ottomans, there was a majority of German bourgeoisie living here, which ultimately the Hungarians overtook during the 19th century. Oh, uh, River, you're gonna lose. Daddy's gonna win. Daddy's gonna win. Daddy's gonna win. Come on, come on. I win, I win, I win, I win. Ciappioni. <laughs> Who lost Ruth? You! Who lost them? Oh, them? So this is the Church of Our Lady of Buddha uh, Castle and behind me is one of the best roofs you're gonna see I think ever. Check out the colours on those roof tiles. So the first time I came to Budapest we were up at this uh, in this castle area um, is where our friends got married and I saw that roof then absolutely fell in love with it what an incredible roof it's the simple things in life isn't it it's the simple things from Fisherman's Bastion is spectacular and really worth the climb up the steep steps. So while you're up here you can go on the walkways, it takes you along the edge of Fisherman's Bastion and it's about 1,200 uh, forints to go up there which is about four pounds so it's not that expensive and you do get some good views and it's great however so you can go that way and you can get the exact same view which is free and you can look at one of these build buildings and you can see the Orsakas um, parliament building over the Danube so you can either pay for it over here or you can go over there and get it for free had a special plan for today. Skye was desperate to get her ears pierced and we had said that as part of her birthday she could do it. So we were recommended by our friends in Hungary a really great place to get them done. Oh, let's go, let's go. Don't you look amazing? Let's have a look. Wow! You look super beautiful today. So after a really awesome day walking around Buddha we were really knackered. You can definitely see a lot of the city in two days, but you are going to have to pound those pavements. To be fair, you can use public transport, which is excellent, but you do miss out on all those stunning buildings as you walk along. The price you pay for convenience. Okay, the best way to travel in Budapest is using the Budapest Go app on your phone, and you can purchase tickets, single tickets, 
um, ride tickets for the metro, the bus and the tram or packages of 10 tickets which is slightly cheaper and then you just validate them for each ticket you want as you get on the metro. There it is. So where are you guys going? Hi, <laughs> where are you guys off to then? The park. So our friend uh, Jason has uh, kindly decided to babysit them for the day, which I'm not sure that's a great idea, but you know, it'll be no, on, it's on you, it's on you. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, we're gonna go off into town and we're gonna go get uh, a pretty cool souvenir from uh, Budapest. So you'll see it when we get there. And uh, what are you guys gonna be getting? What, what's the... Tick 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 See you later, see you Bye. in about six months, yeah? <laughs> so it doesn't happen very often we get this opportunity. Very rare. So we're going to head into the city, uh, I think either the bus or the tram, I'm not really sure which one. And um, we're heading to a place called uh, Dark Art Tattoo. This place was so cool, had a really great vibe and we loved the courtyard into the tattooist. The artwork was really impressive here and also when compared with the UK the prices were really great value for the tattoos. We will definitely be back again and would highly recommend it if you're looking to get some new ink. So this is the design, this is what we're going for. That's my boy Erspista, Strong Steven. Isabella did an amazing job on the tattoo. Even she was a bit puzzled about getting your man from the chili paste jar tattooed. But she was a professional, guys, and there was no judgment. Live and let live, you know. So that's it, it's all done. And now I'm just uh, going back to see if I can catch up with the M and the kids. Yeah, we're heading to a restaurant now, which is like one of our favorite restaurants in Budapest. Uh, we've been here a couple of times now, so, um, Gonna go there, get some dinner, and show the kids some real Hungarian food. So definitely one of my favorite things about Budapest, I mean, there's quite a few things because we absolutely love this city, is the walkability of it, how easy it is to get from anywhere. But it's got a very logical grid system, so you can kind of really work out where you want to be. But once you get into the city, everything's so close. And if you want to use public transport, you can use that, and there's always something that's really simple to understand. Obviously, I'd be scooting more, you know, like that that fella there, but yeah, that's more of a more of the party vibes of Budapest. Okay, time for a quick change. There you go, not bad, eh? Scrubbed up well. How like it? did they do that? That's actually the real one. I know it's pretty cool, isn't it? Wasn't that bad? How was your day at the park? Great. But you uh, got some cabbages, didn't you? No, no. What'd you get? Ice cream. <gasps> Not more Fuji. fudgy. Ice Not cream. more fudgy. We all scream. We all scream for ice cream. Pajoni is a traditional Hungarian restaurant near the river and the Margit Bridge. It is great value for money. The food is really authentic, and there is plenty on the menu for everyone. Erosh pista, baby. Uh, M's still I've got still a little got bit left. A bit left because there's so much on the plate. And the kids after their two meals. I only like the dumplings. They've got most of theirs left, so I guess we're going to be getting some doggy bags again. So one thing that's great to do if you're in Budapest and you've got kids or a family is to check out the Budapest Zoo, which is where we're about to go now, isn't it? Yes. There is so much to see at the zoo, and it was great value for money getting in. It only cost 17,100 huff, which is about 36 pounds for all of us. It's an absolutely banging zoo. It seems like you've seen everything, and then you go down some stairs under an exhibit, and there's this whole other exhibit. Lots of layers to explore, and great for families. Okay. 
Gesellschaft ist. It was our last evening in Budapest and we wanted to get out into the city with the kids. Normally at this point we would be partying until the wee hours of the morning, but as we are responsible parents, some of the time, we wanted to give them a flavour of the nightlife without the crazy partying. It was so worth coming to the river at night time. All the buildings were lit up and it was incredible. The Utsa Kaz looked beautiful across the river. Just when you think you've seen it all in Budapest, this city finds another way to delight and surprise you. Looking back on our trip, I am reminded of just how much Budapest has to offer to families from its stunning landmarks and the fun activities to its rich history and culture. This city has something for everyone. Budapest really knows how to cater for kids with the amount of free parks throughout the city. It's funny, as while we've been staying here, the kids have been saying, why don't we just stop here and live in Budapest? I think they were really, really taken with this city. If you've had a similar family adventure, we would love to hear about it in the comments below. And if you're looking for more family travel inspiration, be sure to check out all our other videos for more exciting adventures and hidden gems from around the world. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more adventures with our nomadic family. Remember peeps to really see a city and to try to get to know the people living there and to understand the history of the place, you need to be there and see it. Ready? Nomaders away. away.